What's up everyone and welcome. In this episode, we're going to talk about the CVE 2021-40438 server-side request forgery vulnerability in the Apache web server software. There are roughly 500,000 systems still unpatched and vulnerable to this flaw. If I had just one piece of advice that I was allowed to give, at this point it would be this. As informative and hopefully entertaining as my episode about this vulnerability is. If you don't know whether or not you're even running a vulnerable version of Apache at this moment, stop this video right now. Go find out. And if you are running a vulnerable version, get it patched or take some other precaution like putting a password protected proxy server in front of it so that only people that are authorized to access that particular system can get to it um, until you can um, can, until you can fix fix the mitigation and make sure that you're not one of those 500,000 systems still vulnerable. Then you can come back and enjoy this episode. Have you done that? Good. Let's see what else we can learn to protect ourselves and others from this story. Oh, drat these computers. They're so naughty and so complex. I could pinch them. Threat actors are exploiting a recently addressed server-side request forgery vulnerability tracked as CVE 2021-40438 in Apache HTTP servers. Organizations are being advised to ensure that their Apache HTTP servers are up to date after it came to light that a recently patched vulnerability has been exploited in attacks. The vulnerability tracked again as CVE 2021-40438 is a server-side request forgery that can be exploited against HTTP web servers that have the mod proxy module enabled. An attacker can leverage this critical flaw using a specially crafted request to cause the module to forward the request to an arbitrary origin server. The issue was identified by the Apache HTTP security team while investigating a different vulnerability. It affects version 2.4.48 and earlier, and it was patched in mid-September with the release of version 2.4.49. By sending a specially crafted request, attackers can force the mod proxy module, if enabled, to route connections to an origin server of their choice, thereby allowing attackers to exfiltrate secrets like infrastructure metadata or keys, or access other internal servers, which may be less protected than externally facing ones, cloud service provider uh, fast, fastly explained in a blog post published in October. Congratulations, you're doing a great job by wanting to learn about the Apache Flaw Vulnerability CVE 2021-40438, and by watching my episode about it. I appreciate your support. If you think I can improve on anything or just want to say hi, just leave a comment in the comment section below. I look forward to reading them. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and smash the bell to be notified when I upload new episodes where I give you insights into the newest important cybersecurity news stories like this one. With my insights, you can be better prepared to protect your company, your family, and yourself against these and other cyber attacks. So hit that subscribe button and the like button and the comment button and the share button and let's continue learning about this story together. Fastly reported that, or at the time, that there had been more than 500,000 servers running vulnerable versions of HTTP um, D, but the company pointed out that cloud services such as AWS, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud Platform provided protections against such attacks, meaning that the flaw mostly impacts organizations operating HTTPD servers on their own. Several proof of concept exploits have been published uh, for the CVE 2021-40438 and uh, last week, Germany's Federal Office of Information Security, or PSI, and Cisco reported seeing attacks exploiting the vulnerability. Cisco's advisory describes the impact of five Apache HTTP server vulnerabilities on the networking giant's products. The company has so far confirmed that its prime collaboration provisioning, security manager, express space series, and telepresence video communication server products are affected, but many others are still under investigation. Cisco pointed out that its product security incident response team, or PSIRT, became aware this month of exploitation attempts of the CVE 2021-40438. The alert issued by Germany's BSI reveals that the agency is aware of at least one case where an attacker exploited this vulnerability to obtain hash values of user credentials from a targeted system. 
The warning of CVE 2021-40438 comes just weeks after news broke that another H uh, Apache HTTP server vulnerability has been actively exploited. That flaw, tracked as CVE 2021-41773, allows path traversal and remote code execution. So, what can we learn? Well, patch, 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 and put patches on your patch, and previously patched the patch that was patched. Okay, seriously though, there are a couple of things here. This vulnerability has been known for a while now. If you don't yet know if you even use Apache, let alone a vulnerable version, then you have an issue in your system documentation. You should be able to answer that question with 100% certainty within, say, five minutes. Or be able to ask somebody and get a really fast answer. If not, then you need to check with IT or your team to make sure that somewhere internally there is an easily accessible documentation that outlines the systems in use, their current version, the maintenance plan or window for installing critical and non-critical patches. Now the second issue. If you have Apache in use and you have not yet upgraded, then there is an issue with your patch management system. You need to look at your patch management plan and process to ensure you are performing critical updates and scheduling non-critical patches to be installed based on severity and not just when your team kind of wants it done. Okay, now there might be some legacy system requirements that could potentially keep you from updating certain pieces of software over time, but that doesn't let you off the hook. Those systems technically require a different security level. If you have a critical vulnerability to an internet facing system and you're not locking down um, even more to mitigate that vulnerability, then you are jeopardizing your entire organization just for one or maybe multiple systems running legacy unpatched software. In the end, for a patch like this one, it should be straightforward and easy to um, easy to do with few, if any, dependencies um, hampering an, an update. So if you have not already, review your patch management, check your system documentation, and make sure that you've covered um, these aspects. With that, I say thanks again for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe if you haven't already, and smash the bell if you haven't already, and I'll see you on the next episode. Take care.